Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video, we are going to talk about these five important parameters about circuit breaker, which you will generally find on the nameplate of circuit breaker. And these parameters will also help you in your next technical interview. So if you want to get the details about all these five parameters, then you need to watch the video. So let us first start by understanding what is M2 and C2 class. First, we'll understand what do we mean by the M class? Well, the M stands for mechanical endurance, right? Mechanical endurance class. Now, as per IEC, this mechanical endurance class is divided into two types. The first type is the M1 class. Now, M1 class means that the circuit breaker needs to perform around 2000 no load operations. Remember that we are talking about no load operations. So 2000 no load operation circuit breaker needs to perform without having any major maintenance on it during the testing. So this is basically a type test. So if a breaker is set to be M1 class, that means it has performed 2000 no load operations without any major maintenance required during those operations right that is m1 class which indicates 2000 no load operations right the second type of class is the m2 class and which means the circuit breaker needs to perform 10000 no load operations this is called as extended mechanical class extended mechanical endurance class m2 which is uh, the 10000 no load operations circuit breaker needs to perform that without needing any major maintenance right so if the nameplate of circuit breaker indicates that the breaker is m2 that means it has performed 10000 no load operations right clear understood it is basically a type test which circuit breaker needs to undergo and it is said to be passed if it performs 10000 no load operations without any issue without any uh, needing of uh, high maintenance right so that is mechanical endurance class divided into two portion one is m1 2000 operation another one is m2 which is 10000 no load operations right now let us move ahead and talk about the c2 here so c2 is basically c class indicates the capacitive uh, breaking of the circuit breaker capacitive breaking right now again it is divided into two types here as per iec standard one is what we call as c1 now under this class uh, if the circuit breaker is c1 class that means it has a low probability of restrike during the capacitive current breaking the second type of class is c2 class now this indicates that the circuit breaker is having very low probability of restrike during the capacitive current breaking. So definitely the C2 class is more stringent to achieve than the C1 class. If circuit breaker nameplate indicates it is a C2 class, that means it is tested very stringently than the C1 class. It has a very low probability of restrike during the capacitive current breaking. Right. Similarly, when we compare M1 and M2, definitely M2 class is better than the M1 class. It is more stringent than the M1 class. Clear? Understood about the M2 and C2 class? Great. Now let us move ahead and talk about the next parameter. By the way, if you are interested in learning the control schematics of circuit breaker, now control schematics mean the uh, opening logic, the tripping logic, the different logic like anti-pumping, uh, uh, the pole discrepancy, the con CTD device. If you want to learn everything about that, then I have a dedicated course on that. I will provide link for that course down in the description. You can go and check it out. You can go from beginner to advanced level uh, in this course. This will definitely help you out in getting the job in the respective industry. Definitely go and check it out. The link for that course is provided down in the 
description now the next parameter is power frequency withstand voltage and lightning impulse voltage now this voltage put together is also called as basic insulation levels bil let us understand what are these now power frequency voltage can occur because of many reasons some of them i have listed here one is phase to earth fault can cause power frequency voltage load rejection can also cause power frequency voltage ferenti effect and ferro resonance these are the few reasons power frequency voltage may occur in the system and no doubt the circuit breaker must be able to withstand that uh, power frequency voltage now iec standard have defined the power frequency voltage that circuit breaker needs to withstand uh, rating wise so 72.5 kv will have different values 145 kv will have different values so for example if we talk about the 145 kv voltage level the iec has defined the power frequency voltage as 275 kilovolt rms is the power frequency voltage defined for 145 kv circuit breaker and circuit breaker needs to withstand that uh, uh, power frequency voltage now for to prove this uh, uh, voltage level the circuit breaker needs to undergo again a type test in which a uh, 275 kv is given to that circuit breaker for 1 minute and if the breaker is able to sustain that value that means it has passed the power frequency test and that indicates that okay this breaker will perform well in the actual field right so that is power frequency voltage now the second parameter that you can see here is the lightning impulse voltage which is definitely caused by the lightning strokes that may happen and definitely the circuit breaker again needs to withstand that voltage level so again iec has defined value for uh, 145 kv voltage level so that is 650 kilovolt peak is the value defined for lightning impulse for 145 kv level these values will change based on the voltage rating right so that is lightning impulse voltage again the circuit breaker needs to undergo type test for this if it is sustaining this voltage level that means the breaker has passed the test clear now so far what we talked about the values that we talked about is affected by the altitude levels so the values defined by iec are up to the 1000 msl altitude levels if this altitude level is going up let's say it is now 2000 uh, meter from the sea level then definitely these values are no more valid there has to be a uh, altitude correction factor that needs to be applied to this value and then again you need to reconsider the type test on the circuit breaker right so that is about the power frequency and lightning impulse voltage now moving on let us talk about the rated current and stc that is short time current now rated current uh, let's call it as rc is the current that flows through system continuously that circuit breaker is capable of carrying continuously without any issue now this uh, rated current can vary from 400 ampere to 4000 ampere now this depends upon the voltage rating this depends upon the system requirement so it can vary from 400 ampere to 4000 ampere and if a value is mentioned on the circuit breaker nameplate that means the breaker is capable of carrying that current continuously without any issue now the one thing that you need to remember here is that this value can be affected by the ambient temperature if let's say you are saying at 40 degree ambient temperature the current rating is let's say 2000 ampere and now if the ambient temperature is going to 50 degrees now this value will degrade it will not be 2000 ampere so you need to take into account the ambient temperature of the site to which the breaker is getting installed and accordingly uh, select the current rating right so that is rated current uh, the breaker is capable of carrying this rated current without any worry and the second parameter that we have here is the stc that is short time withstand current now we talked about rated current which is the normal situation normal current when we talk about stc it is the abnormal 
situation like fault right if the fault happens it can cause a very huge short circuit current which can go up to 63 kilo ampere now again this depends upon the voltage rating the system parameters it it may vary from 25 kilo ampere up to 63 kilo ampere depending upon the voltage rating and the system parameter so you will find generally that on the nameplate of circuit breaker it is mentioned as 40 kilo ampere and 3 seconds now this indicates that the circuit breaker is capable of carrying 40 kilo ampere of short circuit current up to 3 seconds now it can be 1 second also so you have to see the nameplate for that and this also indicates that the breaker is tested for carrying 40 kilo ampere for 3 seconds without any issue but definitely the breaker will break that current much uh, early it the breaking time is in milliseconds of 50 to 60 milliseconds is the general breaking time that you will see so that is the rated current and short time current now moving on let's talk about the rated operating sequence or it is also called as the duty cycle now when we see the power system a majority of the faults that happens in the power system are transient in nature now what do we mean by transient transient means these faults will remain in the system for a very short time and then the system will be back into the system let's say uh, maybe a tree fell on the wire and then the wire touched together and once that tree is you know on the ground the fault will clear and the system will back into the normal position and in such situation if you could restore the system automatically then it is very very beneficial right it it also saves a lot of time so for that purpose there will be auto recloser relays provided now the job of these relays is to make sure that if there is a fault uh, it will wait for some time and then it will try to put system back into the normal operation and you will find a sequence like this mentioned on the name plate of a circuit breaker let us understand what is this so the first o indicates that let's say there is a fault and the breaker will open right after that the breaker will wait for 3 seconds 0.3 seconds uh, to check if there is a fault uh, is cleared and after that it will close automatically the c operation if the fault is cleared it will remain in the closed condition but if the fault is not clear then the breaker will open again then this is the open operation o right now after it opens now this time it will wait for more time so earlier you saw it waited for 0.3 second now it will wait for 3 minutes so if it will wait for 3 minutes and then again it will give a close command to the breaker if the fault is cleared it will remain in the closed condition clear but if still the fault is not there the still the fault is there in the system then it will open again and now the breaker will remain in the open condition unless you put the breaker uh, in the closed condition manually right so that is rated operating sequence uh, or it is also called as duty cycle now this relay is pro not provided in the circuit breaker the circuit breaker should be able to perform this duty cycle and the mechanism of circuit breaker must be capable of performing this duty cycle and if this duty cycle is mentioned on the name plate that means the breaker is capable of performing that duty cycle or the operating sequence clear so that is operating sequence now let us talk about the fifth parameter that is first pole to clear factor now when we talk about three phase system we know that the e phase three phases are 120 degree apart from each other right that's how the system is arranged so definitely this will have impact on how circuit breaker opens so let's say there is a fault on the system and the phases are 120 degree apart from each other so first let's say the r phase will open then after some time the b phase will open and then after some time the y phase will open so there is a distance when the two poles are opening right there will be one pole which will be opening first then second and then third now it could be any pole it could be r pole it could be b pole or it could be y pole now pole is equivalent to phase uh, and it could be any phase it could be r r b or y phase it depends upon at what instance the fault has occurred so 
and it is observed it is studied that the pole that is opening the uh, fault for the first time will experience the higher transient recovery voltage than the uh, transient recovery voltage that circuit breaker will face when all the three phases have opened right and that factor is what we call as first pole to clear factor so it basically uh, you know defines the difference between the first pole transient recovery voltage that is appearing across the first pole that is opening and to the transient recovery voltage that will appear when all the three phases have opened so you will find generally that first pole to clear factor is mentioned as 1.3 or 1.5 depends upon the voltage rating and type of fault again this is defined by the iec standards so let's say if 1.3 is mentioned what do what it indicates so it indicates that the circuit breakers pole are capable of carrying 1.3 times the uh, transient recovery voltage that all the three phases will see when the fault is cleared or all the three phases have opened right so the all three phases are capable of uh, accepting this higher voltage it could be r phase it could be b phase or it could be y phase right clear understood so this is first pole to clear factor now i have dedicated videos explaining the rated duty cycle and the first pole to clear factor if you are interested in knowing in detail about this then you can check out the description of this video i have provided link for those video down in the description you can definitely go and learn more about these factors so that's all for this video guys i hope you found this useful and these parameters are going to be very very useful for you in your next technical interview if you like the video then click on the like button and do comment uh, what did you like about the video do share this video with the people you might think would be interested in knowing all these parameters and this video will also be helpful for them thank you for watching guys i'll see you in my next one but make sure till then you keep watching and keep learning